Now look at this. Lower levels of omega-3, of DHA in the blood, lower levels was pretty tightly associated with excessive activity levels of that brain. 0.7 to 7, tenfold difference, was associated with hyperactivity of exactly that part of the brain. Whoa. The other founding was that in suicide attempters, they not only had the foot on the gas, but they had no foot on the brake. Kind of like the Toyota syndrome. <laughs> Pretty soon you go slamming into something. The cortex was not very active, and low levels of DHA in the blood predicted low levels of that cortex. So you can see, and so we're just on the verge of starting to understand how some of these mechanisms might work. We do a lot more work to know exactly what's going on here. But I thought I'd bring you into this different part of the talk, and I'm happy I did this because Ken Ford said you have anthropologists here at, at his institute and broad thinkers. So I, I had to learn about these brain regions and what they were primarily used for in normative states of the brain. And what they're primarily used for is to encode meaning. How do you encode meaning in a brain? Well, it's kind of like Pavlov's dog. You see the dog, you give the dog the picture of a red light. If you just give a red light, it's meaningless. If you get the dog hungry, give the red light and pair it to food, Pretty soon the dog knows, ah, red light, food, red light, food, red light, food. So you've strengthened the neuronal connections between the emotional areas of hunger and the visual perception of the red light. So that's the, that's the sort of simplest way to describe it. But many neuroscientists think that nothing you see in the environment has any meaning unless it's attached to an emotion unless it's connected to an emotion.